Okay, we'll get started. So I'm Spokane County Commissioner Mary Cuny and I wanna thank you all for being here today. Welcome to the ribbon cutting of this beautiful transformed building from the Spokane County Road Department into the new Spokane Regional Stabilization Center. What a wonderful transformation that this is and we are so excited for you to walk in and get to see this new facility. Um, I want to let you know today that I am joined by my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Kearns and Commissioner French, along with there are several electeds within the uh, audience that I am going to just ask due to time if everyone who is an elected official and dignitary, if you could please raise your hand. Thank you all for being here today. It's really important to have your support, and I know several will be speaking today as well. So thank you for being here for this momentous occasion. I also just want to give a shout out and acknowledge um, several other members of the community that were part of this uh, facility coming to fruition today. My fellow commissioners, the City of Spokane, beginning with the Condon administration, City of Spokane Valley, six counties of the Spokane Integrated Managed Care Region, Spokane, Stevens, Ponderay, Lincoln, Ferry, and Adams. The project team for the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center, including Pioneer Human Services, who was an essential part. Our area law enforcement agencies, city and county prosecutors, city and county public defenders, county detention services, Washington State Legislature, the Washington State Department of Commerce, the Health Care Authority, Thank you all for being here and your support was instrumental in making this facility happen today. The name of this building, so the working name of this project has been the Mental Health Crisis Stabilization Center since about 2017 when I first became commissioner. When discussing options for a final name, we wanted to make sure that we underscored the regional nature of this center and the broad spectrum of stabilization services that are provided. Mental health, substance use, detox, hold of our beds until the next steps are ready. These are all offered here at this facility. And so therefore we are now calling it the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center. The journey that led us here today is in 2017, there was a multi-jurisdiction group team from law enforcement, detention services, prosecution, defense, including representation from engaged citizen groups reached if for a pre-booking diversion facility that would be a good fit for Spokane and allow officers to offer eligible individuals a place to go other than jail or the ER, especially when they're in crisis due to mental health and substance use. This group unanimously recommended, yes, we want a facility like this. And so we get to see that today. Over the next several years, the group constructed a first-in-kind scope of services and secured Pioneer Human Services as our contracted provider through a competitive bid process. Pioneer has worked tirelessly with Spokane County to construct an innovative and operationally efficient floor plan to remodel this building that we see behind us today. We have been able to remodel this building with the funds through the state legislature, Department of Commerce, True Blood, City of Spokane, and Spokane County and there is no debt on this building, which I can say I'm very excited about. Today is just the beginning. We have a changing landscape for how we can come alongside those in need in our community, to act compassionately, yet firmly for those in mental health and substance use crisis. This center provides an option for eligible individuals to find wholeness, health, and get out of crisis. I'm excited to have this center become a crucial tool for our officers, our justice system, and for our citizens. Next, I would like to welcome Commissioner Kearns. You know, th this is a day that's, uh, that's been a long time coming. I, I first heard about the concept uh, of a facility like this back when I was a candidate back in 2016. Um, you know, when, to, to see it from the beginning to now, I mean, it's there, there have been so many things that, that have changed, things that have been tweaked to make the whole concept better, to, to, to support the, the, the whole individual when they find themselves in, in crisis and justice involved. Um, 
you know, and, and that, that's really one of the sad things when you look at the criminal justice system, how many times uh, mental illness and, and criminal justice come to, to an intersection. And, um, you know, you, you can ask any of our, any of our, our, our judges that are here today, um, our, our, our sheriff, our, our police chief, I mean, they, they see that each and every day. Um, and and in, this is a facility that is truly going to be a game changer for, for, our, for our community. Um, you know, we with some of the, the the best things about it are that this is this is going to reduce uh, the population in our jail. This is going to reduce the, the the bookings. It gives our law enforcement another place to go when somebody is faced with a with a mental mental health crisis. You know, it's it's you're no longer faced with jail or the emergency room. We've got another option here. This is going to to help so many people be able to turn their lives around. You know, maybe it won't be their first trip. The, the that's the that's the silver bullet here, but. This is going to play a role that this will be play a very important piece to the to the overall puzzle of mental health uh, crisis in our in our community, um, and you know from from what we, we we understand here this this is in line with some of the uh, current legislation that that's passed at the state level. Uh, that this that this fits in nicely with that, um, but I I just I really want to give a, a big thanks to to so many people that that played a role. I, I would be here for an hour if I'm listing off each and every person that that played a a role to to make today possible. But but I do want to highlight Arian Schmidt and the and the work that you put in. So if I could ask everybody to please give Arian a huge round of applause. So, um, but uh, so to, to keep it short, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Spokane County Commissioner Al French. You know, when you look at this building and its history, it served the county and the county taxpayers well for many, many decades as a maintenance facility for our vehicles. Now it represents change change from not only a maintenance facility, but now a facility that's going to help those members of our community that are in a state of crisis, that are in need of help, that are in need of something other than a jail cell. And so now this facility will help our law enforcement professionals, our medical professionals, provide that level of service for those that find themselves in a state of crisis. So I want to thank the design team, NAC, for a wonderful job and making a transition out of this facility into something that we can be proud of for the generations to come. And also to Baker Construction for a fine job that they've done and transforming this building into a Class A facility for the taxpayers of Spokane County. This has been a period of transition for the last several years. Not only is this building changing, but the way that we deliver services is changing. We're delivering it with much more compassion, with much more intelligence about how do we deliver services and keep folks in a position of service, in a position of treatment, as opposed to in a jail cell. So thank you to the entire team for uh, delivering this product, and uh, I hope you're excited as you go through it and tour this new facility. And with that, I'll turn it over to Representative Fernack, if you're here. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, I better get closer. Um, first, um, my name is Michael O'Malley. I'm a principal architect at NAC Architecture. And um, I was the principal in charge of this project and also the primary health care planner. I'd like to introduce a couple people um, from our office that are also here. Jill Kurtz, an associate principal at NAC, is back there in the back. She was the project manager on the project. And then Kevin Santora, with NAC Engineering doing the electrical and communications design is here as well. First, I really want to thank Spokane County and Pioneer Human Services for selecting our, our team to assist you in the design of this very important facility for our community. Part of our mission statement says, by engaging with communities, we create places that advance learning, enhance wellness, and enrich lives. This facility, by diverting people here that need help rather than taking them to the jail, fits 
perfectly into our mission statement. And so we really appreciate the fact that we were included on part of this team. I also want to just take a second to acknowledge the rest of the design team that worked with us on this project. And if any of you are here as I say your firm's name, would you please raise your hands? DCI engineers, they did the civil and structural design. And uh, just to let you know, taking an old building like this and making it structurally sound for new, a new inhabited space is not a simple thing to do. MW engineers did the mechanical and fire protection engineering. And then NAC engineering, who I mentioned Kevin, did the electrical and the communications engineering. So turning what had been for decades a facility that stored vehicles, basically a garage, into what you'll see inside was no easy feat. Um, there was contaminated soil we had to deal with. Again, like I mentioned, evaluating non-reinforced masonry walls to see if they will hold up structurally during an earthquake was all, all took a lot of effort. And so, you know, our design team jumped up, they, they stood up to the challenge and did an awesome job. And I just want to thank each of them for the job they did, and I hope you will thank them too by giving them a hand, if you would. Thank you very much. I'm Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward. I just want to thank the commissioners for all the work that went into this project, and thank you all for being here. Um, I want to talk about what got us here, and that's collaboration and partnerships, because without that, um, this wouldn't be happening. And just over the past couple of weeks, I've been able to attend some really special ribbon cuttings, uh, one at the Hive on East Sprague and the other one at the New Shaw Middle School in North Spokane. And those all came about because of our city's commitment to building partnerships throughout the region. You know, we, we can do wonderful things when we're working together, and this is a perfect example of that. The school district and the city came together in historic partnership to reimagine education in public spaces, and the results were amazing. It's something that our neighborhoods have needed. But here we are today collaborating and celebrating regional partnership once again. It's another example of all of us working together for a common goal, and that's helping those in need through innovation, collaboration, and compassion. This facility is a new, much-needed tool to break the cycle that can trap people in the criminal justice system. A mental health crisis or a substance abuse problem needs to be treated at an individual level, and this facility will do just that. So through partnerships with Pioneer, Providence, MultiCare, the city, and the county, we have an opportunity now in our community to make a real difference in the lives of people who need help and not a jail cell. So thank you to everyone involved in this project. I am especially proud of the collaboration that took place here today. Working together, as we know, is not without its challenges, but we always had a common goal, and that's to make our region safer and more responsive to the needs of our citizens. So I hope you all are as proud as I am today. Thank you. And now, our police chief, Craig Michael. Good afternoon. Uh, so you heard a lot about collaboration at, at both the state, county, and local level as well. And when it comes to our issues that we're experiencing in our region between mental health and substance abuse, there's no more of important topics than collaborating on dealing with these issues. And, and this is the fruition of many years of working together and getting to where we're at today by collaborating and realizing this is a regional issue. Our law enforcement and our public safety providers and courts have, have long tried to be at the front end of the trends in terms of what are best practices from our veterans court to our DUI courts to our co-deployed units where you have mental health counselors that will ride with deputies and officers. And now this is the next evolution of stabilization center where officers and deputies that are out in the field and have to remove that person from that scene can, can really look at what's the best option for this person. Jail is not always the best option for a lot of the people that we deal with, but we have to remove them from the scene. The emergency rooms are not the best option. This provides a niche for that gray area and will give our officers and our deputies a lot more flexibility in trying to get these individuals that need that extra help 
the extra support, the help that they need as well. So this is a huge evolution for us, and it's just a, a, a example of the the regions staying at the front end of the trends nationwide as well. And with that, I will turn it over to Karen Lee. Sounds like we have a change. Yeah. I'm going to have uh, Councilwoman Betsy Wilkerson please come up. Good afternoon, everyone. As always, when we gather like this for an occasion like this, it's celebratory. And so I am honored to be here on behalf of Council President Brian Beggs, who is not able to speak right now, and some might applaud that. You can if you want to, and others are sad. So, but thank you again. And you know, two levels. First of all, I do want to celebrate just this physical space that has been said that has been transformed to provide a resource for our community. And then that resource that will be available to the people that we all care about in our community and region. I will say I am a provider of services to the very people who will come to this building we have a family business that's assisted living for the mentally ill since 1976. That's not my age, but the business has been around since then. So when they started with foothills stabilization, and then we went to Kalispell stabilization, and now we have evolved to where we are today. It is a good day for our city and the people that we serve. I also want to applaud the city council. Before my time, they took the leadership role in advocating the legislature for the initial funding for this project here today. And not just that, but then all the others who stepped up to fill the gap. Because truly, it was a gap in services that we had in our city. I then want to go on to say that, you know, this facility will serve 46 people. That's not everybody in our community. But like the starfish, it'll make a difference to that one that get the opportunity to come here and receive the services and disrupt that cycle of revolving into the criminal justice system or into the substance abuse system or whatever system that they might be in this will be the place that plays that role in our city. I am just heartfelt today to be a part of this and just to see the collaboration, that is the word of the day, that whatever our challenges were, whatever our differences were, wherever the money came from, where the money didn't come from, it didn't matter. We have achieved the goal that was set out and that's providing a place for people who need the help. So I celebrate all of us today, and I'm gonna ask you for a big hand applause. Come on, give it up. Let's show some love, not only to this building, but to each other that is right here in this space. As we go forward, I look forward to good things, and as we go into the future, I look for more opportunities to meet the needs of our region not just with stabilization, but around education, around healthcare, around collaborations, around communities. We can do it, Spokane, in all of our surrounding municipalities. So thank you so much, and I'm glad to be here, and I'm excited to see what the inside looks like. So now, now I'd like to invite uh, Karen Lee, the CEO for Pioneer Human Services. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Lee, and it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to follow up on the theme of collaboration for just a minute. Um, as many of you know, Pioneer is a statewide organization that's committed to helping everyone that we serve have a healthy and productive life. And one of the things that is key to that is a community that operates in partnership and collaboration. 
and Spokane is special. Um, this is a community that we love to serve. It's a community that partners in, in a unique way. I don't need to bash King County in Seattle to tell you how special you are. I think most of you already know. It's just truly an honor um, for Pioneer um, to serve all of you in this way. And, and Spokane is a, is a community that we have been here for a long time and um, our employees um, that live here love this community and by extension all of us statewide do as well. I wouldn't be here today um, without a couple of um, the Pioneer family members that I work with and I would just like to uh, make a couple introductions um, and I can't introduce all the Pioneer employees so sorry in advance but our board member Nancy Isserlis and dear friend of mine um, she is um, she provides so much counsel to Pioneer she always always not all, and she's a great lawyer for your community, but she also makes sure that, that we're thinking about um, the east side of the state as we deliver services. So thank you, Nancy, for all you do. And then we want to, I want to just recognize our director, Dan Sigler. Um, Dan is the senior employee that we have here in Spokane, and, um, and he has done just great work for us over the years. And, um, and, um, and he always makes sure to reflect the needs of Spokane back to our organization. Um, he makes sure to get me out here um, several times a year and, um, and we just couldn't be more thrilled and more proud of Dan. So thank you, Dan. And he personally put a lot of work, blood, sweat, and tears into this and I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the entire company. Um, recovery is possible. And mental health crisis and substance use disorder, they are diseases that follow a disease path. And I think for many of us in, in, in Washington, um, we, we thought treatment was incarceration. And, and today, we know that that's really not the case. And when I think about law enforcement is here, um, we have an option for you. I can only imagine what it's like to be in law enforcement and to have to arrest someone and then see them within two or three hours walking around the street, going right back to the place where they were to go back and get high. That just has to be so disheartening. Um, so it's, it's a stabilization center that gives another option, a humane option um, to, to law enforcement. So it doesn't have to be going to jail right? It doesn't have to be clogging up an ER. Um, individuals can come here and guess who they're going to meet? A peer who's been there that's going to say, I was just like you. And look where I am today. And that's what we want for this community. We want to reclaim lives. We want to have people reunited with their family. And when they are under the influence of an addiction, that drug is what's driving everything in their life and there is hope and um, and there's always a chance for change and it all starts with a drop off at a place like this so i just want to just say um, it takes a community that can collaborate to provide the safety net that so many people need and and a safety net that's without judgment because we don't know the trauma we don't know the trauma that people have faced I just, I drove by here and there was a guy on the, uh, I mean, like right down the road. And I thought he should be in the stabilization center. And, um, but we don't know why or how we got there and it's not our place to judge. But it is our place to not have him sitting on the street. That's not good for Spokane. And he needs to be a place where, where he can be treated. So um, we are so proud, of, you know, to assist you in helping to reclaim lives and to be able to work in collaboration and in partnership with the, with the county that does it better than any other. So thank you, Spokane. On behalf of the employees of Pioneer, um, we couldn't be more pleased to be working on your behalf to help begin a new life for many of the people that we are going to serve because we know recovery is possible and we have employees that are committed every day 
um, to a life of, in recovery. So with that, I want to say thank you. And I have someone to introduce, I believe. I do. Are you, can you help me? Okay. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, so our next speaker is Allison Paulson, the CEO for Better Health Together. I feel like a giant woohoo! This is so cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go even further back than Commissioner Kearns and say when I arrived at Better Health Together nine years ago, we were talking about hot spotters, high utilizers, folks who were cycling through the system. And there was a group of people who were like, we can do better. We know we can do better. Better Health Together, always ready to roll up our sleeves, like bring it on. So we are just delighted to celebrate everybody's hard work that got us to today. This is not only a beautiful thing for the city and the county, but for the region. Better Health Together serves a six county region. We see the effects all around and how we act as a safety net for much of, our, much of our region. And we can only do that well, and I think I did hear, we're better than King County. Coming out of the last speaker, we're gonna own that um, and say we are doing better. And this is another piece of the puzzle. And we've gotta keep building that puzzle. There are still folks who need our help. There are services that are not coordinated and there is a way forward. So we look forward to a big celebration today and then getting back to work. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Representative Marcus Riccelli. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, I wrote a few things down, but uh, I like to just wing it when it comes to these things. Uh, this bricks and mortar is more than just bricks and mortar, it's a philosophy. And I wanna thank everybody out here in the crowd. I wanna thank um, folks in our judicial system, our law enforcement, elected officials, but more importantly, disruptors in our community said that it's not good enough anymore, that we're gonna embrace a philosophy that no longer will we warehouse mentally ill in our jails. It's inefficient, it's ineffective, and it's immoral. And so I hope we can all um, feel that change and I am so grateful for all the people in the community that are leading that way I want to say on behalf of the state legislature. We were happy um, To help with funding uh, I want to tip my hat to Senator Billig and Representative Orange. We ever work with I think I saw Representative Graham. I serve uh, on the capital budget committee uh, with Representative Volts as well uh, This is what happens when everybody comes together um, we can do more of this here. It's not that hard, and we can do uh, big things in Spokane. Again, uh, another uh, shout out to uh, Commerce and Director Brown for all that effort. But again, um, I enjoy the spirit of collaboration, but I am very thankful for the trailblazers who disrupted uh, something that wasn't working, and we're trying to change course now. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Again, today is a special day. Um, this is a building that is gonna provide hope, opportunity, and a better life for the individuals that actually walk through this door. And so thank you to all of you who have come together today, the elected officials, our speakers, the community members for being here. We really appreciate all the effort. And this truly is one of those things that when everyone comes together, great things happen. And so we are excited. Um, and so with that, we are going to cut the ribbon and open the doors to this new facility.